What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to better understand the parts of a prosthesis so that you can help your amputees and also pass the NPTE. Now, usually when you're setting up a patient with a prosthesis, you will work in conjunction with the patient and their prosthetist. Usually the patients you're working with will have amputations around the knee level, so above knee, below knee, or knee disarticulations. And some of these will be weight bearing on the residual limb, which is also called the stump. Honestly, I kind of hate that term. Your patient should be wearing a shrinker most of the day when they are not in their prosthesis. And these can be a little bit sweaty sometimes, so they're gonna have to take that off every now and again and just kind of clean and dry the limb before putting it back on. The prosthesis will change several times over the course of probably about 6 to 12 months after their initial operation as there are changes in the limb size and shape due to atrophy and edema and also as the patient kind of figures out what they like, what's working well for what they need it to work for, what type of function they're expecting to have. Usually prior to donning the prosthesis they will have this neoprene liner that's placed on. Sometimes this neoprene can be part of the suspension mechanism. Suspension is meant to hold that prosthesis on the leg so it doesn't fall off. So sometimes at the base of the sleeve there will be a pin that will click into the socket. There are vacuum or partial suction mechanisms that are placed inside there and sometimes there's just a rubber sleeve that's placed over the top of the prosthesis that sticks onto the patient's bare skin that holds the prosthesis on. Over time this patient is going to work with their prosthetist and you to try to find the best fit before they have the final socket made. The initial socket is made of a cheaper, heavier material because there's going to be a lot of them made before the final one is ready and that'll be made out of a light, strong carbon fiber and it's really expensive. As the patient is going through this process, they're going to add different socks on top of their residual limb, between the limb and the socket in order to add some cushioning and help it fit better as their limb changes in size and shape. These socks are just added until it really feels like the prosthesis fits snugly but if the patient gets up to to 12 to 15 ply, they need to get a new temporary socket because now it is too big for that patient's limb. Depending on where the patient's amputation is, that socket will have to be a different length in order to help the patient bear weight on tendons, muscles, anything soft like that. Bones do not bear weight well. So, so far you have a socket with some kind of suspension mechanism, usually with different layers underneath it. And then we get to the knee joint and there's a few different types of knee joints that you can have. So single axis and polycentric knee Knee joints are usually a little bit cheaper. They provide constant friction and are decent for gait on level surfaces. If you need something to help you navigate different types of surfaces or different cadences of gait, you're going to need something a little bit more heavy duty like a hydraulic or microprocessor knee which can have different programs written into it and will help the knee adjust by using a computer. And these provide variable friction depending on the activity you're participating in. Underneath the knee you will have a shank which is usually a rigid pylon called an exoskeleton. For people that are more concerned about cosmetic appearances, they may have an endoskeleton, which is like a skin colored piece of foam placed on the outside. So if their pants leg peaks up a little bit, it'll look like they have a leg down there rather than a prosthesis. Then we get to the ankle joint. Now the simplest type of ankle joint is called a satch or a solid ankle cushion heel, which basically has very little give to it. It's just kind of like a foot place on the end. You can also have a a single axis joint here which is, allows a little bit more knee control. You can have a dynamic response joint which stores some of the energy in gait and helps propel you forwards or you can have a hydraulic or microprocessor joint again here at the ankle providing more control and stability for varying activities. The type of parts that are chosen for the patient depend really on how functional they're expecting to be and what activities they need them for. Medicare has a system called the AMPRO. K level zero or unlikely to be able to use a prosthesis at all. K level one may be able to transfer or ambulate on flat ground and so they could use single axis joints at the knee or ankle. K level two are able to be limited community ambulators so they can navigate low barriers like a curb and they are eligible for polycentric joints with a little bit more mobility. K level three are able to do unlimited community ambulation and can do a little bit more than just walking so maybe they can do some jogging, maybe they can do some some sidestepping and they're eligible for hydraulic or microprocessor joints. And finally, K-level 4 are usually kids or athletes or really active adults who want to participate and are physically able to participate in higher impact activities and they qualify for just about any type of joint or prosthesis that they could want. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy! 
Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. This is basically just a rigid pylon covered in foam to look like skin, so at a quick glance, there doesn't appear to be a prosthesis under your pants. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, feel free to check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy. Otherwise, you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.